Well, thanks for uh, joining us today to uh, see a live pop pod demo. Um, you can see the app here. I'm on our uh, on our main oops on our main home screen, where uh, you can see the uh, notification tiles at the top. So I've already configured the product, and at this point, we just want to uh, show you around on the app and show you how to start a game, how to play with some of the settings in the game. Um, so the very top here, we've got um, results from a previous game, which I can share on social media. Uh, if I also scroll these notifications, you can see where my dog has earned various badges, achievement awards, and you can share those on social media. If you have uh, if there's new so software for your toy or for the feeder, this is where it would show up uh, for you to click through and update your devices. Uh, if, the, if the feeder is empty, you'd see a notification here to let you know that the feeder was empty. So this is where we try to inform the user of things that are going on in the system that they need to be aware of. And you can see I've got multiple dog profiles. So you can you can create as many dog accounts as you want. You just hit that little plus sign uh, to the right there, and you can add accounts for each of your dogs or profile for each of your dogs. And then you can see that my toy and my feeder are both paired. So I'm going to go ahead and go into Ollie's profile. Here you can see all the badges that he's won. The ones that he hasn't won are in dashed lines. And there's a whole bunch of different, um, he's played a lot, so he's won a lot of badges. But there's a whole bunch of badges that a pet parent can watch their dog um, uh, earn. You can see he's Ollie spent a lot of time uh, playing Pup Pod. So his account's been active for quite a while. Hopefully we'll have some customers that have uh, similar levels of playtime in the near future. Now that we've just got the product out, I'm gonna go ahead and hit uh, play now and you'll see how quickly the phone communicated with our server to the feeder and to the toy. And now that you can see they're both connected. So it says the status is available. You can see the, the level of battery that's left in the toy. And I get asked the question, a lot with um, how long the battery life lasts. And actually, as of this moment, these two batteries that are in the toy the behind me, the toy is on the floor there, the, the white object with the, with the uh, gray base. And you can see the feeder follow my finger just on the table right behind me. So the game will start playing and the food will come out of the feeder. And um, these batteries have been in the toy since August 1st, and it's still at 71%, so three and a half months of battery life and the toy doesn't turn off is is pretty amazing and, and ollie has been playing for anywhere between one to five hours a day so the toy's getting pretty heavy usage and the batteries are still have tons of capacity so that's been a really amazing engineering feat to get that that combination of, of product capability um if i want to change the sound that the toy makes i click on that the link to change the toy sound i could pick lights only, and then that will use the light ring instead of playing a sound. So for a hearing impaired dog or a dog that's hard of hearing, or um, even if you're in a conference call and you don't want the toy to be making noises in the background, that's an interesting option. There's options like the doorbell sounds so that you can desensitize a dog to the doorbell sound. Uh, obviously the squeaker is a pretty common one. There's some techie kind of high pitch sounds the treat bag shaking, you know, every dog comes running when you open a treat bag. So we're experimenting with that. Uh, the rotate sounds option actually lets your dog pick which sound they like the best. So when the dog starts to interact with the toy, uh, then the, the, the sound will lock in on whatever sound that they find interesting. But for now, I'm just gonna use the squeaker sound. And it's worth noting that we have a number of new sounds that will be coming out uh, as we keep releasing uh, updates to the software. So for customers who wanna see specific sounds, we ask them to send us an email, let us know what you'd like to see in the list. For the feeder, I can also pick different sounds for the feeder. The clicker, I'm gonna leave it on clicker for now because uh, it just is a popular one to help reinforce clicker training. So that when they interact with the toy, the feeder will play the clicker sound and that just adds more validity to uh, the dog's understanding of that association of the clicking sound, that that means they're gonna get a reward. Now, when I hit the start game, you'll notice the, I'm gonna be quiet for a second, you'll notice the toy make this sound where it goes, bee -dee -dee, 
and Ollie, who's sitting behind me, will see. He should, uh, there's the sound. So now Ollie will know that the game has started and uh, he'll go over to interact with the toy. I have to encourage him. All right, Ollie, go on. You can play. Go on. Yeah. Okay, so on level one, anytime Ollie hit the toy, he'd earn a reward, but he knows to hit the toy when the treat sound plays. So if he had been, if he was hitting it right now, it would still make a reward come out. And so this is helps us, helps the dog build a connection between the toy and the feeder. Now you'll see on the, on the screen here, I can uh, shift the level while the game is playing. I can do this remotely. I don't even have to be at home. I can be at work. I can change the difficulty settings of the game. And now at level two, now Ollie does have to touch the toy right after the sound plays. So um, that's the normal behavior that he's used to. And at level three, now we introduce a second sound so that the, uh, the dog has to discriminate between the first sound, which is the one I picked, and the second sound, which is picked by the system, and it sounds like an alley cat. That The alley cat sound just played there. And Ollie knows that that sound doesn't give him a reward, so he just ignores that. He's figured that out now. But in the beginning, uh, when a dog's first learning this level, they um, will be interacting on the, the new sound and they just have to learn over trial and error that that one just doesn't pay a reward. And as our system notices the dog starting to ignore the alley cat sound, we can let people know to increase the difficulty to level four. And now at level four, if Ali had touched the toy on the alley cat sound, then the alley cat sound would play again. So this is what dog trainers would call an impulse control task. Uh, the previous level where he just introduced the second sound is what trainers would typically call a discrimination task. So both of these are in the game. And then at level five, now the sequence of sounds becomes random. So it doesn't just alternate back and forth between the sound that I picked and, uh, and the alley cat. Now he could have some random number of alley cat sounds will play. And so Ollie's got to keep listening so that when his treat sound plays, he only has two seconds after that sound plays to touch the toy. So you'll see him focusing here. That was one alley cat that just played. Well, now there's a squeaky. So he's going to hit the toy. He's going to get another reward. And um, <clears throat> you can also change the time interval between sounds. So there was one alley cat. Let's see if it plays another alley cat uh, while, while Ollie's up. Uh, waiting for the uh, for another treat sound to play. There's a second alley cat. I'll keep going here describing the time interval, but you'll hear that when um, the squeaky sound plays, Ollie will will hit the toy again. So he's just ignoring the alley cats. There's a squeaky sound, so he gets a little reward. And uh, for the, the time interval is the time between sounds. So I can increase that. Right now, the sound is playing every 10 seconds. But if I bump that up in five second increments, I can force Ollie to concentrate for longer because now there's gonna be more time in between sounds. And also I can set the time interval to be random. So not only can we randomize the sequence of sounds, we can also randomize the time between sounds because dogs are really good at detecting patterns. And so introducing randomness just adds another level of difficulty for the dog to adapt to. Um, so you can see that I can use these little sliders and pick the range that I want the, the time interval to be random. But for now, for the purpose of the demo, I'm just gonna go put it back and let the, uh, the time interval stay at 10 seconds. And if I'm away from home and I wanna let my dog play, I can turn on video and this way I can see my dog playing, I can see the game is running and just verify that everything is working correctly. So you'll see this is live, live video in the screen if I wave my hand here, in a second or two, you'll see my hand waves. You can see this is live video. Normally, in a, when you're looking at the video, you probably have the toy further away so that your dog is, is going into the field of view more frequently. I'm gonna go ahead and turn off the video now just because I'm getting a feedback loop while I'm doing the demo. And that those are really all the features of the, the gameplay. So I'm gonna go ahead and stop the game and show a few more features in the app. 
So at this is game over sound, the game over screen. Now we'll see these results where Ali played for four, four minutes and 51 seconds. You'll see that's going to now be um, the, the last notification. It'll pop up here in a second. And then if I go into the devices from here, you can test video to make sure it's working. You can test dispensing a reward manually, dispense a reward from the feeder, but you can also update the feeder software so that um, the, the, you always have the latest software in the feeder. And you can also update the toy software so that you can always have the latest software in the toy. So as we roll out new features, those areas will, will uh, allow you to keep the, your, the latest features in your, in your hardware. So with that, that's pretty much the, the quick demo of the product. And uh, check out our other videos for more information. Uh, thanks a lot.